Global Banking and Finance Review Awards highlight the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes who've excelled in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're pleased to offer reinsurance company Behrens Re a Global Banking Award. Known as the world's niche reinsurer, Behrens Re has a financial strength rating of A for excellent. The company has a comprehensive range of product lines and industry sectors, including energy, commercial property, bonds, liability, marine cargo, renewable energy, financial lines, construction engineering, and life and A&H. With a global network of worldwide offices, Behrens Re covers the world. Global Banking is pleased to award Behrens Best Reinsurance Company Italy 2018. Recently, CEO Gerardo Garcia came to the London office to receive the award from GBAF's Lydia Goff. Well, Gerardo, thank you very much indeed for inviting us to your offices today. And indeed, congratulations on the award as well. Well, thank you so much for the award. Uh, we're very happy to be nominated and to receive it. Excellent. Tell us a little bit more about Barents Re uh, and your main areas of business. Well, Barents Re is a, it's a global uh, multi-line reinsurer. We operate in about 60 countries worldwide. Uh, our main lines are basically we are specialist uh, reinsurer, basically in the areas of energy, uh, bonds, where we operate in specific uh, markets, uh, uh, liability, um, marine cargo, um, uh, some property, but basically we are a specialist market, very much focused on, on, the, on the facultative area of the market. What are some of the challenges facing the, the reinsurance business at the moment, would you say? Quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we can talk about that the entire day, but, um, but reinsurance, uh, I think, is facing a, a number of challenges. Uh, first, there is, a, because of, of, of changes in weather and patterns, there is an increased uh, frequency and severity of, of cat events, which is impacting the solvency of insurers and basically uh, putting a lot of uh, uncertainty on the underwriting. Uh, last year we had uh, one of the most active uh, hurricane seasons in the Caribbean and in Latin America, also some events on the typhoon season in Asia. Uh, we may have a, a similar event uh, this year and we'll have to see how the solvency of the market actually reacts to that. Uh, on the second hand, there's a, a second point that is the, the political tension worldwide, the threat of sanctions, uh, which are difficult to foresee, and, and the effects are, are, are felt worldwide. Uh, are we going back to a, a, a sort of a Cold War mm -hmm. uh, mentality? And, and thirdly, uh, I think on, on, a, on a global scenario, reinsurers have to adapt to living in a less global world. The world is becoming no more global but less. Uh, countries are retrenching. Uh, England is going out of the European Union, uh, so diff uh, we, you have to foresee that different economic blocks may be formed, maybe smaller, and maybe more uh, trade restrictions will happen, and this will impact also the flow of people around. We have grown accustomed to going everywhere and flying around. That may not be as easy. as easy and necessarily the case in the future. So, just to sum up what you're saying, uh, really the political situation around the world can have a very big effect on, on how you run your business. Well, uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, as you can see now, the sanctions in, in Russia from the US and, 
and Europe is seeing if, it's, if it implements it or not because it has economic uh, effects in Europe, uh, automatically uh, impacts the, the business of reinsurance because we are subject, we have some policies on, on business interruption, on political risk, uh, that basically uh, will be impacted. And also the, the way that we trade our licenses uh, around the world and in different markets might be uh, canceled or, or we may have to uh, see a, diff uh, a different way of actually accessing specific markets. Given all that, how do you remain competitive in that changing world of politics? Well, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the, the, our strategy uh, seems a few years back is basically based on direct uh, integration, on uh, going directly uh, to the business uh, in a more direct way and uh, basically cutting some of the intermediation areas. Uh, in Europe, we are pursuing a strategy to actually, on, on the bank assurance area, and in some of the areas to actually own the channel, totally or partial. Uh, and this may include uh, buying some uh, banking or finance operations in some of the, of the markets that we're interested in. So to basically uh, be able to vertically integrate and be able to uh, source that business uh, directly. Uh, that uh, we may not be the only reinsurer thinking of this, but we're probably one of the most uh, advanced on this idea uh, of doing it because basically we are a niche reinsurer, so we don't have to integrate into everything, but in specific areas uh, of the market where we're interested in, in doing it. So for us, maybe simpler than from other players that have, have a, a legacy uh, uh, issue on their own business. And looking at your own business strategy, you've outlined that a little bit. Can you expand a little bit more on how you see your business strategy? Well, uh, I think um, strategically, it's, uh, we're living in, in an age of uncertainty. Uh, for example, here in the UK, uh, what is the actual uh, form of a post-Brexit uh, reinsurance market in, in the UK? Nobody is able to give you a, an answer today. So it's difficult for reinsurers to plan. At the same time, you have to give uh, clients, markets, insurance players worldwide uh, certainty. This is uh, very complex uh, and difficult. Uh, there is a disconnect between the political apparatus in Europe, uh, basically around the world, and the economic function. Uh, and this disconnect is causing uh, uh, a disruption in the way companies can plan for the future on a mid to long term uh, basis. Having said that, uh, we are, are focused on a very specific lines of business and on having local presence in the market so that we are exposed to that specific risk, but not on a broader uh, scale. Uh, and as I said before, uh, on vertical integration and concentration and access to a specific business and markets. And while you're running that business, obviously the client experience is, is vital. How important is that, would you say, uh, to the role of the client experience itself? Well. In our business, it's, it's a bit difficult to define the client because as a reinsurer, as a classical reinsurer, uh, the clients are uh, insurance companies uh, and large corporations. What we are actually trying to do is to, as we integrate vertically, to go directly to the, to the client itself, the consumer on the street. That, uh, is uh, truly the challenge of, of reinsurance uh, in our days, uh, to be able really to add value directly 
and not just to be a provider of capacity for uh, financial institutions or, or insurance companies. And that also has a different level of skill set and preparation. Uh, in our view, reinsurers uh, have to evolve and uh, add uh, value in, in that framework on a way that uh, they have a protection against other competitors because you basically own the channel, you have developed the products, uh, and the clients basically respond to a product offering that adds value in a specific market. Mm -hmm. It's more costly because now, rather than uh, having products worldwide, you have to uh, establish presence in specific countries, regions, uh, and the rest. So the distribution is more costly. But you're eliminating layers. And by doing that, it should compensate. This is a strategy, and we have to see how it is. But it gives you the certainty of having a specific business that uh, is yours, and uh, you can add value into it, and you can only develop it. And presumably, just as an additional point to that, uh, the country, or the countries you're talking about, then your approach has to, to vary somewhat because everybody has different needs? Well, uh, as you know, we're uh, uh, based in, we have business in Europe, the Middle East, Asia, uh, Latin America mainly, and some in Africa. Each market is different. If you try to approach uh, a blanket uh, market response, uh, it will be wrong. Uh, I was last week in, in Turkey, uh, and Turkey right now has, f uh, on the consumer and on the business side, specific challenges and uncertainties uh, that reflect the political uncertainty that they have uh, locally. Uh, Europe and some of the markets have, in their own sense, uh, their own uh, political uncertainties. The U.S. It's all about uncertainty right now. Nobody knows uh, what's going to happen next. So the world has become uncertain, and people want predictability, which is incoherent in, a, in an uncertain world to be able to plan for the long future. Uh, and that's the challenge uh, that insurers are facing, and mostly uh, every financial institution is facing. Uh, how do you plan for the future? with a level of certainty in a very uncertain world where you don't know exactly what is going to happen, not a year from now, but maybe three months down the line. And many of the things that have happened were uh, probably for many unthinkable. Uh, and that uh, presents challenges itself and on, on also on the strategy execution. It's very difficult to do it. And I think at the end of the day, nobody has a, a magic uh, lamp that you can predict the future. And there will be winners and, and losers. Those who actually chose and had the luck of uh, the outcome being more on their side, and others that chose a strategy that actually, uh, on, on the overall certainty, uh, the, 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 the environment didn't go their way. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much how the world is divided today, in my opinion. Well, uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying there completely. Uh, looking to the future, what are your, your current plans for uh, expansion and development? Well, our current plans include to diversify our, and strengthen our, our, our focus in, to some of the European markets, which we have identified as, as key, uh, some of the markets in, in the Middle East, and uh, some expansion into Asia. Uh, obviously, we have to, to determine what's going to happen in China with their trade war with the US and the rest. But uh, also, in, in our mind, also the UK, after Brexit, may become uh, a market that is interesting because, uh, obviously, when you have Threats. There's also opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we'll have to see it. I think the, the UK might become a very competitive market uh, because it will have to become a competitor to the European Union mm. uh, sooner or later because that's, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the case that you have to compete uh, or die. And the UK, I think, will, after Brexit, probably become a much more competitive uh, market, mm -hmm. not necessarily tied uh, so much to the European economy, but maybe a more global uh, base player. Um, uh, we have to see how that evolves and, and be ready to adapt the strategy towards that. Interesting times ahead, as you say. Yes. Thank you so much for coming Thank to so talk much. to us today, and uh, congratulations once again on the award as well. Thank you for the award. Thank you so much.